I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're talking about how to remove that papery skin from garlic cloves with a method that uses no work whatsoever, and I'm not overselling that at all, it is literally no work. The reason that I'm doing this video is I saw another video by Prepper Potpourri, it's about how to pre uh, prep and preserve garlic, uh, you know, for long-term storage. I'd highly recommend you check that out, it's, uh, uh, here's a link to it right here. Uh, but in that video, uh, she talks about how it really vexes her trying to get the paper skin off of garlic, and doesn't it bother all of us? It's really one of the big uh, issues with doing garlic like when I'm, I'm prepping things in the kitchen and I'm thinking about whether to, whether to throw garlic into it that's a big part of my uh calculus about whether I want to do the garlic is like, ah oh man, do I really want to mess with all that skin? Especially when you get down to the tiny little cloves on the inside and you're like wondering, is it even worth it? Yeah, you know, it's like practically 80% skin on that thing. For me, waste not, want not, I'm always going after all of those, but it really is a big pain in the butt until this year. I found a way of getting the paper off of the garlic with literally no work at all. And it starts with the process of how you plant it and everything. Right now it's right around Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day, however you want to call that. Uh, you know, I, I get the idea why why people wanted to change the name. You know, Columbus did some really, really cool things, and he also did some things that if you found out your neighbor did those things, you'd like call the cops on them because that's a problem. Uh, you know, some of the you know the crazy, demented things that he, that he did. So I get the idea why they want to change the name. Uh, but you know, if you wanted people to use a new name for it, Columbus Day. That's four syllables. Indigenous Peoples Day. It's a lot more syllables. How about Natives Day? That would work pretty well and honor a huge group of people. But anyway, whatever you want to call uh, th this particular holiday, this time of year, at least here in New England, is when you put garlic in the ground. And I'm right next to my garlic bed right here. And this is the same garlic bed that I used last year. It's kind of inadvisable to use it again for garlic, but I'm you know, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm going to be sticking it in here. And it's going to sit here, uh, you know, for the rest of the fall, through the winter, into the spring. It'll start sprouting and it's going to grow through the summer. And it, eventually the tips of the leaves are going to start turning yellow. And that, that is a time when it is ripe and it's ready for you to harvest it. That's the rule of thumb. And that's what I did this summer, except I planted so much garlic here, I just didn't have the time to harvest all of it. I got a bunch of it, uh, but I didn't get all of it. Weeks and weeks and weeks went by, and I started, you know, trying to grab some more of it. And I noticed as I was pulling it up, it was uh, well. At first thing, uh, the stalks had withered down, where it was a little bit difficult to even find the stalks. You kind of see them sticking up, like little bits of them. Uh, you know, the leaves had started decaying, and you know, I was able to locate most of the garlic, I think. And I pulled it up, and I noticed that the papery skin had started decomposing right off of the garlic, but the garlic uh, cloves themselves had not. So I took that stuff, I put it under uh, a, a, a strong spray from a hose, got all of the you know, decomposed paper off of the thing, uh, you know, got them nice and clean, set them out in the sun for, I don't know, it was probably several days, I was probably lazy about that too, let them dry in the sun, then I brought them in, and all the paper's off of them. Nature did it for me. Now, the one downside, and I don't want to say that it's a downside because I don't think it actually makes any difference, is I did notice some discoloration on the uh, the bulbs. Uh, they had uh, some little little like black spots or, or whatever on them, but it was just very, it's very surface, it washes right off. Uh, and, but, you know, the result of the entire thing, the cumulative impact on me is that I don't have to remove any paper from any of these things, and they seem like they're holding up fine. They're not rotting or anything. Uh, so, there's a sweet spot there. When you're doing the harvesting, wait for the stuff to, uh, you know, die back to that, like, uh, that, those yellow tips. And at that point, you can harvest. And I'm going to show you uh, right on the screen right here. I've got two bags, the one that I harvested at the quote-unquote proper time and the one I did later. The one on the left, uh, that was the one I harvested when the tips were turning yellow. And as you can see here, they're, uh, you know, they have the paper on them. And it's like what you normally think of as being, a, you know, a garlic clove that you might buy at a grocery store. The bag on the right hand side, uh, those are the ones that I harvested much later. And as I pull these guys out, you can see that the paper is pretty much not on there at all. There's like a little bit, little bits of shreds of paper on there, but the, the bulbs, uh, you know, just pop right out and they're clean. And with just a little bit of a rinse of water, it just takes that surface tarnish off. And boy, is it so much easier using my garlic this year. So. I would suggest try some experimentation with it. Uh, you know, I'm sure that if you leave it in the ground too long, it becomes a problem. In fact, some of the uh, garlic cloves uh, that were in here I missed because I waited too long and like the, the leaves had died all the way back and they've actually already started sprouting. Uh, so I guess the, uh, the potential um, 
issue that you could face is that you don't get to harvest your garlic and you've just pre-planted all your garlic for next year. Uh, now you might think, well, uh, that could be a problem because you're supposed to plant individual cloves and uh, you know, you'd know you have entire bulbs all planted together. Now I've done that too. In fact, last year I planted just bulbs. I was I was too busy and I just, I threw in whole bulbs, uh, you know, all next to each other. And uh, I was anticipating there would probably be a price to pay for that. Like, you know, they'd be crowded in there and you wouldn't get um, bulbs off of that that were, that were quite as big. And I think that probably was the case. So they, they seemed like on average, the ones that were clustered close to each other were maybe 30% smaller, but you save an enormous amount of work. And even that I felt was kind of worth it. So it's worth experimenting with things. See what works in your area, see what works for you. There are rules of thumb and there were common practices out there, but that doesn't mean there aren't new techniques to be discovered and shared uh, you know, with other people. And this could be one of them, the absolutely no work paper removal process on garlic, which has mother nature removing it for you. That's it, I hope you find it helpful. Uh, if you have any tips about different things that you've found uh, that are shortcuts about how to do things in the garden that uh, you know save a lot of time, effort, or energy that kind of depart from you know the normal way, I'd love to hear about them uh, down in the description below. And you know we can start rewriting uh, the, um, the best practices book for how to do planting because like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of secrets, I'm sure, that are out there waiting to be discovered. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.